Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan and this is the fourth and last video in my mini-series inspired by Katie aka Pronoun Montgomery's ridiculous tweet showing that he doesn't know what a conspiracy or a conspiracy theory is. Now I'm not going to deal with the last one about sports in this series because I want to make a separate video on that topic probably in my awful argument series. The one remaining that I haven't already covered won't take long to demolish. Trans healthcare is sterilising gay kids. This one could be a conspiracy theory if it were presented as such, but what Pronoun Montgomery is actually doing here is conflating two very real and important and concerning issues, and he's trying to take the piss, basically. I think for this to qualify as a conspiracy theory, you'd need some secret cabal of homophobes, which excludes the usual suspects who openly fund LGBT groups, and it excludes the oft-mentioned American fundamentalist Christian right. I mean, their homophobia is hardly a secret, and presumably their transphobia is just as bad as their homophobia, right? Oh, wait. I remember even thinking before Kai was three that I think this kid might be gay. And I thought that that could not happen and that would not happen. We started praying fervently. The mother there, Kimberly Shapley, describes herself as having been born a Republican, a Tea Partier and an avowed Southern Baptist evangelist. She goes on to say that she googled gay conversion therapies in the hope of applying the techniques at home to her little boy and only when she heard him praying one day and asking the Lord to let him go home and be with Jesus did she know that she would rather have a transgender child than a dead child, as she puts it. Now, Unlike this woman, this good Christian woman, I try not to judge people who are a product of their environment too harshly, and in the unlikely event that I ever meet her, I promise I will try to resist the temptation to give her a slap. I've had many online exchanges with women of her ilk over the years saying things like, my daughter is a lesbian, how can she do this to me? You know, once I was casually watching an American reality TV show, I think it was one of those home improvement shows, and in one home there lived a little boy who, in my memory, looked a lot like Kai. He had long blonde hair and he was playing with a doll's house, and My Little Pony or whatever. The difference, if I recall correctly, was that he wasn't pretending to be a girl and neither was anyone else. They were referring to him as he and him. He was allowed to be himself. Imagine how much better it would be for everyone if we didn't have these rigid cultural rules about how boys are supposed to be and how girls are supposed to be, and we just let children be children. It doesn't matter if a boy wants to wear a dress and play with dolls. How about telling him that there is more than one way to be a boy and fighting for his right just to be himself? Having said all that, Mrs. Shapley does admit that prior to having a gender non-conforming child herself, she was very judgmental about people who said their children were transgender, and she apparently still is judgmental about homosexuality. But somehow I doubt that people like her are part of some secret plot to trans children. Most of them would probably do what she admitted to doing and forcing her kid to wear clothes he hated, to participate in activities he hated and hit him when he displayed feminine behaviours. Shameful. It is fairly well established now that homophobia plays a part in the transing of some children. In a couple of my previous videos, I have drawn attention to clinicians at the Tavistock, which is the place we send children from England and Wales who claim to think they are transgender. Clinicians there recount hearing parents who make it obvious they'd rather have a trans child than a gay child, and there are kids with internalised homophobia who desperately don't want to be lesbians or gay boys. So that's the first issue that pronoun conflates here, the erasure of homosexuals, and he conflates it with issues arising from what he calls trans healthcare, and by that he's obviously not talking about the in-depth 
counselling or psychotherapy by empathic mental health professionals that should be compulsory for anyone of any age before embarking on a course of potentially risky treatment that will cause irreversible changes to their perfectly healthy bodies, which they may end up regretting. He's also not talking about pharmaceuticals that may or may not help with mental health issues like anxiety, depression or PTSD. What he's talking about is the effect of hormone blockers on kids who may or may not be gay, followed by cross-sex hormones on their future fertility. Let's just stick with the term healthcare for the moment. Doesn't it imply something that is for the good of your health? Getting a correct diagnosis is an important part of healthcare, obviously. That is something that gender clinics are notoriously not doing these days. What they are doing is pretty much allowing kids to self-diagnose and then just affirming that diagnosis. That is what the Kira Bell case boiled down to. In her story, she relates how the idea that she could be a boy was externally introduced, didn't come from within, but it seemed to provide a possible answer to why she was feeling as she was. She writes, What was really going on was that I was a girl insecure in my body who had experienced parental abandonment, felt alienated from my peers, suffered from anxiety and depression and struggled with my sexual orientation. After a series of superficial conversations with social workers, I was put on puberty blockers at age 16. A year later, I was receiving testosterone shots. When 20, I had a double mastectomy. That's healthcare, is it? Superficial conversations then referred for life-altering permanent changes. Irreversible damage, as Abigail Schreier put it. As you may know, about a year after having her double mastectomy, Kira realised she had made a mistake, that she was not and she never would be a man. And goodness knows how many similar accounts there are from other detransitioners who are brave enough to speak out like Kira Bell because it does take courage. Detransitioners are treated disgustingly by the cult and are often ashamed and embarrassed to admit to their families that they've made a mistake. Nevertheless, there are many detransitioners telling their stories right here on YouTube. The Detransition subreddit now has over 21,000 members and of course on my website I have a detransition page with links to many more stories. So that is the first reason I think the term healthcare is misplaced in this context. The implication that you are doing something good in affirming a kid's self-diagnosis with a minimum of professional exploration doesn't stand up to scrutiny. The second reason is about the effects, the risks versus benefits of the usual interventions, starting with gonotropin releasing hormone analogues, which are commonly referred to as puberty blockers, for the obvious reason that if they are given early enough, they will prevent the normal bodily changes that happen at puberty, which must sound fantastic to any kid who is as mortified as I was when my body started to change. You don't have to be questioning your gender as they put it nowadays, to not want to grow up while you're still at primary school. They are not licensed for use in suppressing normal puberty in children diagnosed with gender dysphoria because, as I understand it, studies involving their use in those circumstances have not met licensing requirements. The justification for prescribing them is to give those children time to explore their gender identity which sounds a bit lame, but that's how I've seen it described again and again. Various professionals who take the affirmative approach to treating those children, and should be struck off, in my opinion, say it's like pressing a pause button to give children time to think. Hmm. I think kids want them for the same reason I would have jumped at the chance of getting them. To prevent the development of unwanted and distressing secondary sex characteristics. Back in 1967, when they started happening to me, the notion that I might be a boy in a girl's body just didn't exist as an idea. There was nobody around to suggest it 
was possible, so it didn't enter my head. I was just a tomboy, reluctant to embrace womanhood because I felt too young. I felt like the child I was, and subconsciously I think I felt that one day I would feel ready to face the inevitable in a few years time maybe. So if somebody had said you can delay puberty by having these drugs injected and the effects are fully reversible when you're ready and in the meantime they will reduce the mental torture, the depression and the anxiety, I would have broken down doors to get that treatment. I would probably have threatened suicide to be honest because I was a bit of a head case at that age. Adolescence was terrible, traumatic and I still have nightmares about it. Do they cause infertility? Well, they work by preventing the release of chemical signals that stimulate the production of estrogen and testosterone. So your sexual development is arrested. If you go straight from puberty blockers onto wrong sex hormones, as almost all the kids do, you're not going to be able to produce ova or sperm, are you? And in fact, consent forms for a cohort study for kids on blockers at Los Angeles Children's Hospital for trans feminine kids, meaning boys who wish they were girls, specifically state that taking feminizing medications after being on puberty blockers will likely lead to infertility. So it's not a conspiracy or a conspiracy theory, Monty. It's a publicly stated fact. Now, obviously, there is so much more one can say about the transitioning of children and the effect on their health. It is the most important ethical issue raised by the promotion of gender ideology. But I want to keep this short and just stick to the point that I set out to show, which is that Montgomery is a plonker who tries to put down his enemies by pretending we are the conspiraloonies. But if he wants to mock conspiracy theories, he should find some real ones, like the ones promoted by his fellow cultists. I'll be back soon with something else. Thanks for watching. Bye.